Hello, and welcome to Rome 2, episode 26, The Battle of Alalia. So, we're back, recording a little bit earlier than I thought we would, but hey, that's all good. So, I was listening to the last episode, and a few things struck me. First, I realized I wasn't Rome. supposed to be recruiting Firepot Byrams, but I couldn't figure out why. So I took a minute off screen to take a look, and I did figure it out. Fire pop birems require 60 plebs for the manpower, whereas assault birems require 60 proletarii. And therein is the reason. The manpower at Terrace is 12,476 proletarii. The plebs is only 665. And when I build those bigger ships, it's 140 plebs. So we're going to cancel those two fire pop birems, that's what you heard, and uh, add a couple assault birems instead. So that was the first issue I noticed. The second was, I was thinking about Genoa and what I'm going to build there, and I don't like the idea of having an agar publicus here, because I just don't. So we're going to cancel the agar publicus and the... Uh, Consecrated ground and we're gonna build the villa instead That's basically for food and then go back to the consecrated ground if I want to change it I can change it in a few years, but for now Yeah, we're gonna go with food because Well eventually we're gonna research a tech here in a little while and we're gonna need a lot of food and uh, Yeah, that's it. So With that we're gonna say uh, farewell to turn 49 winter of 266 BCE, although, before I say farewell, there's one other issue that I had. So, after I ended the episode last time, I realized I forgot to read This Year in History, so I actually took a screenshot of it with my phone, and uh, yeah, we're just going to read it off my phone. So, This Year in History, Winter of 266 BCE. The Roman consuls and Greek archontes, Decimus Junius Para and Numerius Fabius Pictor. The Athenian archon is Nicaeus Otrinius. The deaths are Mithridates I Satistes, founder of the kingdom of Pontus in Anatolia. Now, in the Roman Republic, on January 23rd, Marcus Attilius Regulus and Lucius Julius Libo celebrate triumphs over the Salentini. We know those two individuals. And then Calabria and Mesopia are annexed by the Roman Republic. The second section is Asia Minor. Ariobazarnes becomes the second king of Pontus, succeeding his father Mithridates I, Satistates. And in India, the marine emperor Ashoka converts to Buddhism. That was it. A very short this year in history, so I got lucky. But uh, yeah, there you have it. Now, we'll officially end turn 49, winter of 266 BCE. We are set to make 5,262 denarii next turn, 14 food, and we have 2,630 denarii in the treasury. So without further ado, let's end it and see what Carthage does. Now, I'm definitely attacking and taking Alalia next turn, as the name of the episode would suggest. Uh, looks like Abibal just tried to do something to Legio 2. Uh, Carthaginian judge north of Cosentia just sailed down, sailed down, walked down. And yeah, that was it for Carthage, not much. So yeah, we're going to uh, take out Alalia next turn, and that is on the island of Corsica. I mislabeled it Sardinia last time, I am ashamed of myself. Um, if I believed in lashes, I would probably get 50 lashes for that. So yeah, that's, uh, that's not good as a historian, but you know what? I drilled it into my head and I will never forget that Corsica is now the upper island and Sardinia is the lower island. Also, the spotlight for this episode will be on Alalia and Corsica. So there you have it. After we take the city, we'll do that and then see where the game takes us. Uh, once again, my last episode was a little bit shorter at about an hour. I'm going to try to do an hour and a half. So my family is in bed around 10, 10.30. I figure I'll start recording around 10.30 and then I can record till, you know, about midnight and then uh, I'll publish the next day. So hopefully I can get two, three episodes a week doing this. Not guaranteed, but hey, I'll play at my own pace while I uh, mix in other games. As always, there's never any shortage of video games and always a shortage of time. So 
There you have it. Alright, well. Turns out Abiball successfully wounded my general, Lucius Julius Libo. So we're going to go ahead and put uh, Marcus Attilius Regulus back in command of Legio 2. So he's getting a lot of work. Uh, the use of mercenaries. Maintaining your strength this far from home may prove dis difficult. You should consider hiring mercenaries to bolster your forces. I mean, I'll do it. I'm not going to hire any, but sure. Uh, wounded. Abibal targeted Lucius Julius Libo with assassinate, and your loyal subject was wounded by a brutal attack by an enemy spy. Uh, Eunia Calva and Arya Calvina have returned from their missions. Uh, Ulpia Sevra, the agent on Sicily, was exposed. And that's it. So I'm checking our event messages real quick. We have a motivated populace in Cisalpina. That's actually bad because we're losing public order. A construction complete, a villa in Cosentia. We'll handle that later. Then we have a late spring in Latium, a late spring in Sicalia, and a late spring in Illyricum. So that is three provinces with poor weather. And then a household expands. We did get an extra barley rations for Naeus, Cornelius, Scipio, Asina. So maybe we'll take a look at... Uh, our households next term, and then we recruited two assault by reams in our classes as one. Well. So things are looking kind of good. We'll look a lot better here when we take Alalia. So, without further ado, let's send Lucius Cornelius Scipio in. And there you have it. We have Lucius Cornelius Scipio leading Legio Six. Commanding 3,150 men against the garrison army, led by Epidonomus, with 3,085 men. Now this will be an easy victory for us, uh, despite the fact that we lost 350 men on the sea. We end up losing 50 cavalrymen and about 300 infantry, so I expect us to take less casualties during this battle than we did on the sea, but we'll see. For now, let's assault the city and uh, see what happens. Now remember, Alalia does not have any walls, and uh, the way it's set up is it's not quite a rectangle, but you have openings on the front, the left, and the right. So what we're going to do is we are going to put a force in the front, and then a force on the left, about equal in strength, and then we're going to slowly march in and uh, see if we can't engage on two fronts that way, see if Carthage will split up their forces for us. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the goal. And then of course we're going to loot the city when we're done, get ourselves a big cash infusion, and uh, keep building. The goal is to keep building, try to get our per turn income back up to eight or 10,000 denarii, and then look at recruiting a fourth army. We'll also have to look at sending Legio 3 back down to reinforce uh, Legio 2 on Sicily. So the weather conditions are dry, we're going to start our deployment. We're going to move one, two, three, four, five, six Princopes up here with two Triarii on the wings. That'll be Battle Group 1. And then we'll uh, go ahead and create a cavalry force with our general behind them as well. We're going to put that as our normal Battle Groups 8, or not 8, 0, and 9. And we'll take our remaining Princopes, as well as our two Triari, and put them on the left flank, and put those cavalry behind them. That would be Battle Group 8 for the cavalry, and Battle Group 2 for the Princopes. So I'm going to start the battle and get them moving, and then I'll describe the, uh, the layout of the battle here. So, like I said, we got one very large entrance here in the front. There's currently a couple, looks like there's three Carthaginian militia, a Libyan townsfolk, and some cavalry riding out. And actually, it looks like they're moving pretty quick to the point where my people on the side aren't even going to be needed. So, remember, I did put half of my forces on the, the side here, but everyone's marching to the front gate, so we're actually going to try to run up here. I usually don't like to run. But I don't want to let them get out. And then we're going to move our cavalry in too here. Because the enemy cavalry is moving. So yeah, they're actually moving out of that main entrance. So we're going to get our forces out. And we're going to hold. And then we're going to get our auxiliary forces into the city. As soon as possible. 
and we're gonna try to envelop them here, gonna surround them. Alright, I'm sending my general in to engage the enemy cavalry. It's not a general's cavalry, it's just a Carthaginian cavalry. So it's like quote unquote normal cavalry. So the general just engaged, and then we're having a group of equites coming from the side to slam them. And uh, yeah, the Libyan townsfolk are moving. They're engaging my main legionary line. Uh, there's also three ships that are going to dock. Two of them are ranged, and one of them is mailing. So we got some archers that'll probably come in, and then maybe a swordsman unit. Equity! We're going to go ahead and actually get on. Our guy's moving here because the enemy's already kind of engaging us here. I actually got to redeploy a Principator side here because they're trying to surround my equities. Looking good though. I can't believe they they came out. They actually came out and they gave up their more defensible position. So I don't know what. Try to assault me, I guess. Enemy cavalry is down to 50, 50 men. And I'm sitting pretty pretty good with the men I have. Once so again, we're gonna keep this. This uh, secondary force moving, and we're just gonna try to envelop the enemy here. They've completely left their back open, so I don't know what they're doing there, but. I mean, they even have some ranged units that they're, uh, they're sending them for some reason. Uh, enemy cavalry is completely taken care of, so we'll have uh, our equites running down. We're also gonna use our other equites to charge the uh, Libyan townsfolk here. The townsfolk are just like peasants, so they're folding already. One of them has completely shattered. The other one is now wavering with that cavalry charge, so I assume they'll be dead pretty shortly. We're gonna send an inspire at rally to our men. We know that our general is with him, and uh, he's looking out for you. We're also gonna pull back our other equites, and we'll need to chase the enemy cavalry. Not going anywhere crazy. We're we'll actually get our. We're not gonna get our general involved yet. We'll have him sit here, and continue uh, inspiring the troops. We're gonna get our side cavalry force involved here. Then we're going to actually redeploy a couple print of pays here. So we have the enemy off the boats coming in. We have a few forces over. There's only three units coming in, so we're only going to redeploy three forces. No need to go overboard. And yeah, we're looking good. There's a couple micro skirmishes going on here. There is one area where I have like four enemy units surrounding my Terraria. So we're going to have these reinforcements that are coming in, try to alleviate the pressure there immediately. And, uh, and we're going to commit these other units that I had here, and have them start attacking the uh, people that are coming in off the boats. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to keep pumping people down. I think we're in pretty good shape right now. Yeah, we're going to... Keep going, there's another unit that shattered. We are Libyan Spearmen, it looks like. Yeah, so we're gonna hunt them down as usual. And then our reinforcements just got here to help alleviate those Triari on the side that are kind of surrounding. And then we're gonna redeploy one unit of Equites to charge um, one unit of Slingers, or Toxiton, and then we're going to redeploy the other to charge the other unit of Toxiton. This way we can hopefully get those archers to route pretty quickly. They're already in melee combat though, so they're not going to be, you know, the battle is turning in our favor. shooting anyone anytime soon. Things are looking good. I do wish it's a blob on the left. It was a little less blobby, but what can I say? The enemy kind of blobbed. 
We'll redeploy a couple of units in there. We can redeploy a lot of units now. So the uh, people in the middle just folded. So now everyone else is folding out. All the flags are wavering. I assume this battle will be over in the next five to ten seconds. Maybe shorter. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, oh, I was off. So, only about two seconds off, but we're gonna go ahead and continue the battle. And uh, we're gonna have our cavalry hunt down the enemy, as usual, because that's, uh, that's what we do. Can't, can't leave anyone alive, that would go against our, uh, our model. We'll go ahead and speed it up to triple triple speed, and uh, find our cavalry units and get them chasing. Yep, so there's only a few units left and we're just chasing them right now. We should be mopped up pretty shortly. Uh, we have three units in the yellow, the rest is in the green, and there's a couple units that didn't even take any casualties, well, besides the casualties they initially did. But, uh, that's to be expected, right? Those initial casualties on the, the ocean. Alright, we got one more group of Libyan spearmen that we're rounding up. And then we'll get to see, did we lose more people in the battle? Did we lose more people at sea? I'm willing to bet we lost more people at sea. So, that's the end of the battle. We're going to quit here. Decisive victory. Save replay. That was battle 11. We fought Carthage. We were on the city of Alandia. It was a city battle. Put a C in there, and then it was 266 BCE. And go ahead and save that. And uh, end the battle. So it says our losses are 150. So we lost 200 more people on the sea <laughs> than we did in the battle, but. Like I said, just to re-explain myself, it was kind of reckless of me to do that, but I didn't want to risk any Carthaginian fleet, right? Their navy catching me off guard, because if their navy caught that army on the ocean, it was dead. The whole thing was wiped out. 20 units, probably 20,000, maybe 30,000 denarii down the drain, a dead general, like it just, it wasn't worth it. You know, losing those 10% of the men, well, maybe not the smartest was still the better outcome, or else it would have just delayed my invasion plan. So, here's our after-action report. Decisive victory. Rome deployed 3,150 men. We lost 150 men, and we have 3,000 remaining. We got 2,736 kills and 341 captured. Carthage deployed 3,085 men. They lost 3,081. They have four remaining. They killed 150 with zero capture. So we're going to go ahead and loot the city here. We will be gaining 12,518 denarii, but be hit with a minus 40 conquest and minus 12 instability. Uh, Lucius Cornelius Scipio gained a level, and that was it. So we'll go ahead and handle his increase in rank here. Uh, his first default skill is Abundantia. Look, we make the pie bigger. Then everyone can have some. No, it's not a real pie. Plus one food, plus one growth per turn in the local province. And then we're going to go with our normal military logistician. Every battle can be won before it is even fought. Plus one cunning, minus 5% upkeep for all land units and all ships. And then commander of men. I have seen countless enemies as well as comrades fall before me. Plus one authority and plus 2% morale for all units. Remember, when you go to level 2, you only get 2 skills, so that will finish him out. We also have our newly captured regional bonuses from Alalia. Your newly acquired region has special attributes that make it different from other regions. These include things like trade, fertility, and public order. It's going to be a farming province, so it doesn't really matter. Then settlement captured Alalia. You now control this settlement. If your influence in this province is sufficient, you can develop the settlement to suit your needs. So we're going to go ahead and just convert or dismantle each one of these building slots. So we do have four building slots here. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, save our money for next turn.
Also, settlement looted, Alalia. Your forces have looted this settlement, gaining much wealth. The savagery, however, has caused damage and outraged the people. So we're going to go ahead and move Lucius Cornelius Scipio out of the city. Just leave him there. He can't go in any stance, but by leaving him, removing him from the city, he did lose a little bit, right? or we gained some public order. So we're also going to go ahead and not tax the province. Just looking at Alalia, we'll do it while we're here. We are at zero public order with a minus 67 next turn. So that's coming from minus 40 from conquest, minus 12 from provincial uh, instability, and then minus four from devastation. So next turn, we're going to gain 44, 45. So we're going to gain 45. So it's still not going to be good, but we'll have to send a lovely lady there to, to help us out. But big win. Lots of money, and most importantly, we get a lot of line of sight here. So that a line of sight did allow us to discover a troublesome fleet as well. We'll talk about that later for now. I'm going to go back and do things in the normal order I do. So we're going to look at our spies. I like where Ulpia Sever is on uh, Sicily, so we're going to leave her there. And I like where Mamemia and Obarba is on Sardinia, so we're going to leave her there. Uh, Marcus Caecilius Scorus is in Rome, and Decimus Claudius Nepos is in Terrace. We're going to leave them there, and we're going to move Marcus Claudius Marcellus onto Sicily. He will successfully make it there, and then we're going to deploy him this turn. So he's going to be administrating in the province there. That handles our diplomats, and then I think our veterans are still doing their thing. They are, so our veterans are still in good shape. Next, I want to check out our faction tab. Just looking at it right now, we have a 0% chance of civil war, but we have dropped down to barely known in the Senate. Unfortunately, because our party leader, faction leader, was injured, he can no longer gather support. So we'll have to do that next turn. And uh, yeah, that's about it. We're just going to look at the breakdown. And it looks like the Genj Junia and Cornelia are still the weakest strength-wise. So we're going to go ahead and send ladies from them out. So we got the Gens Cornelia here. We're going to send out Ionia Calva. She's going to organize games in Corsica at Sardinia. And then we're going to send out Aria Calvino and have her send as an emissary in... We're going to go with Sicelia because it's got negative food. Not a bring food there. So we gained a little bit of public order and food. And that will round out our faction tab. Next, we'll have to look at buildings. Uh, we'll start with Genoa. Not much to do there. I could build a fishmongers, right, which will give me a bunch of food, but at the cost of four public order. And considering Genoa is losing public order, we're not going to do that. Latium looks good. Terrace looks good as well. We're going to go ahead and turn the villa into a herding ground. So what is a herding ground? Not all land is suitable for arable farming. In the ancient world, cattle were an expensive and precious commodity to any farmer, and people rarely ate them except during religious feasts. Instead, oxen were used as beasts of burden for transport and work on the farms, where the manure was also used to raise the crops. Cattle trading was big business. The size of a herd was an old measure of wealth from before coinage became standardized. Food production was also one of the driving forces behind Roman expansionism. Wherever their armies went, they needed a continuous supply of animals for food to support them. It was because of this that Rome developed animal husbandry throughout its empire in order to increase yields and feed its vast armies. So herding ground is going to gain us 3 food, 250 wealth from livestock, that's agriculture, minus 2% recruitment costs for Hastade, minus 3 food, minus 1 growth, and plus 25% local farming and livestock income when export food edict is turned on. We'll never use that plus 0.4% third class citizens, and supplies plus 7 plus region fertility. So we're only gaining one food, unfortunately, but we're gaining a bunch of wealth from agriculture. Now, I guess I could have done the grain pits, but I don't really know what the grain pits are. Like, the grain pits, they're nice, but the main reason I'm doing the herding place, right, the herding ground, is because eventually it'll give me livestock as a resource, and I'm curious what that's going to open up. So I want Cosentia to have livestock as a resource. That is the primary reason. Now, looking at 
Magna Gratia. We have a lot of other stuff we can do here. We can do the Aqueduct, which I'm not going to do just yet because we don't need the bonus from the Latrines. But I think I am going to do the cons. No, because we don't need the bonus from the Consecrated Ground either. So Magna Gratia has zero public order right now, right? So it's 99 with a zero move next turn. With that zero, it doesn't need public order. So we're just, we're not going to touch it for now. We'll save that money for a rainy day. And then Satrakusai, nothing can be built. And in Illyricum, we can build a couple things, but once again, we're not going to, we're not going to touch anything just yet. We're going to hold on to our money because we are at 14,995. It's a lot. And 5,381 in turn is a lot, but for reasons I'll go into in a second, well, it might not be a lot. So, next we're on to our armies. Legio 2 was assaulted, so we're just going to kind of leave them here and hope that uh, everything's going to be alright. It looks like they're actually going to be re able to replenish from Serakusa. So just looking at that, we have 217 patricians and 195 plebs in Syracuse, so there's a little bit of manpower that's uh, building up for us there, but not much. Uh, we're going to move Legio 3 up north. Now, I was thinking about Legio 3 too. Just looking at our most wounded target here, we have a Princopes that needs four turns to fully replenish. So I think we're going to actually move Legio 3 into the city of Ascalum because that'll increase the replenishment a lot. It goes from four to two turns. So we'll keep him in Ascalon for one turn, and then we'll have him start marching down south. And then we're also going to recruit that Princope unit, because... No, not a Princope unit. We're going to recruit an Equite unit. We lost one of our Equite units, so... By recruiting there, we're going to bring our Legio 3 up to full force. Uh, Legio 4, led by Lucius Papyrus Cursor, is still outside of Rome hanging out. Legio 4, 5, led by Marcus Junius Brutus, is outside of Ariminum patrolling. And Legio 1, led by Decimus Junius Brutus, is outside of Aretium. Now, here's the issue I talked about earlier. I usually want to talk about this on the campaign map, but I'm going to talk about it now. On the west side of Sardinia, there is an army here. The Blazing Fury of Neto. It's an Editani army led by the High King. So this is not a fleet. I can check because I'm looking at the icons here. This is an army. And I don't know where they're sailing to yet. They can't get very far. So I can probably wait a turn or two, but they might be heading to Alalia. They might be heading to Syracuse. Or they might be heading to Rome or Aretium. So I'm actually going to take Legio 1 out of a patrol stance here and move it a little bit down south. And by a little bit down south, I mean as far south as possible. And then put it in a patrol stance there. Now, with line of sight gained from the island of Corsica and Alalia, I have full line of sight in the Cenus Gallicus. That's the shared sea region with Massalia. And then I have full line of sight in the Mare Tyrenum. That's the contested one. That's around Carolus, Alalia, and then my eastern or western seaboard as well as northern Sicily. So I have a lot of line of sight. Now I would like to take Agragos so I can get line of sight in the Mare Africum, but like I said, I without another army, I need to keep Legio 2 close to Syracuse to defend. So that's kind of where that's at. We're just going to monitor the situation here with uh, the Blazing Fury of Neto and see what moves they make. And then as for our navy, we're going to do what we normally do and recruit a couple more units. In this case, we're going to recruit a couple more assault biremes, bringing us up to 14. Now, I was going to disband these firepot biremes to put the plebs back in the city, but I don't know where or when Carthage's army is going to show up. So until I can get that to be a 20 stack, they're just going to kind of stay in there. Also, Terrace's public order did drop the negative 7. I think that's because Legio 3 left, so we are going to invest in a city or in a in a upgrade here and I think we're gonna upgrade we're gonna upgrade the aqueduct the latrines so we already read it but what are we gonna gain out of this well we're gonna go from plus four to plus five public order so we're only gonna gain one public order but we're gonna go from plus one to plus two growth so we're gonna gain one growth per turn plus four to plus six sanitation for all regions so we won't have any squalor issues minus two to minus four percent regional income and taxes 
uh, we're gonna go from no Latin influence to plus two, and then we're gonna go from plus three to plus four percent replenishment rate, and then plus 0.1 percent. We're gonna stay at 0.1 percent first class citizens and gain 0.5 percent. So it's not big that one public order per turn, but it's gonna have a lot of other bonuses that are gonna help us grow Magna Gratia because we still have at least three construction slots left to build there. Latium has at least three, potentially four as well. So my cities are very far behind when compared to the other cities that the AI got a hold of. And they're going to leave Legio 2 and 3 in the middle of the Mare Ionium and Mare Adriticum and keep them patrolling to increase our uh, money we gain from trade. Now that did bring us down to 8,678 denarii, which once again seems like a lot, especially with now 6,121 next turn. But remember, we're going to have to build a whole bunch of buildings in Alalia, plus we might have to start recruiting another army. Touch and go. That's all I have to say. It's going to be touch and go. Yeah, and that's it for most of my stuff. We'll do a real quick uh, campaign round up here. So the Masalian Theater looks quiet. Nothing to report in Masalia or Narbo. There was just that Editani fleet I had told you about. Same thing up here in Venetian lands. Once again, all quiet. Not much to report. Uh, no moves really one way or another. And then same thing over here on the Greek front. Uh, besides Larissa, you know, going under control of Epiros, it looks like the Antigonids are still holding Pella. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm not going to check diplomacy because like I said, we... Uh, we don't really need to. I am going to real quick go over public order. So if you remember Alalia, the taxes are turned off. Genoa is at minus 7 public order next turn. And even though we are 35.9% Latin, we do have a 0.2% negative move next turn. Celtic is also falling, but we still have major public order issues. Minus 12 there. And minus 7 from taxes and minus 11 from slaves. So I'm hoping something happens there but i don't know like that minus seven is worrisome but right now genoa's generating 692 denarii like we just we can't turn the taxes off same thing in the otter the otter is only 19.4 percent latin but it does have a plus 1.1 percent move next turn and this could actually flip to latin in a few years but more importantly they're bringing in 364 income not huge but you put the otter and genoa together and that's a thousand of my denarii like, it's, it's big. And once this town center completes... Yeah, now I do understand that I did delete the um, the consecrated grounds there. So I think once I rebuild the consecrated grounds and then add in a, maybe a shrine upgrade or two, that'll help even out stability. Likewise, in Sadarkusai, we are at negative 60 with a negative 12 next turn. And Syracusai generating 462 denarii, which is a lot. You know, those, once again, three provinces, it's about 1,500 denarii if we turn them off. So, we're going to keep it on. Syracuse is a little bit more self-explanatory. Like, we got that minus 8 from provincial instability and minus 14 from cultural differences that will eventually go down. Right now, we are 6% Latin, with a, or 6.4% with a 1.9% move next turn. I can't help but get the feeling that the enemy judge this enemy mercenary veteran and then the two other enemy judges that are coming down are going to cause issues not to mention abby ball is around here lurking so we're going to hope to get this we get that consecrated ground finished next turn we're going to evaluate next turn and see where our public order is because right now those three provinces right those three individual cities in a province are sketchy and that's another reason why public order is tough i only have one city to work with you know, like, Latium has four cities to draw a positive from, right? Latium is 100 plus 7. You know, perfect. 70.4% Roman with a half percent move next turn. Like, they only have a cultural differences hit of minus 5. Like, that's huge, right? Huge. Terrace, on the other hand, is minus 7. Part of that's, though, because I have this fleet docked here. You know, I have Quintus Triblius Strabo still gaining a bunch of experience. So that's why it's hurting, right? Having him there is not not the not the best but like i said i i really want him to get experience and level up having a, a good admiral helps just looking at him right now he's 54 to 96 so it is going to be a while before he levels up but terrace is at 99 public order they have they have some to spare uh, real quick i am checking out my uh retainers and i think i'm going to give lucius papyrus cursor a uh the extra barley rations 
and then eventually I'll have him come down here and he's gonna get those six Prinkapes that are in Legia 1 if that Editani fleet makes a move. So, there you have it. That's our goals. Now we have, let's see, what is turn 50? We have 6,121 denarii. We're gonna make next turn. We have 21 food incoming. And uh, it is spring of 266 BCE. So with that said, let's uh, let's end the turn and see what Carthage does. Suspiciously quiet. I don't see any armies or navies of Carthages. So there's a navy that just sailed up and attacked in a pyrote navy. Uh, army just landed on Agragos, and then another army is attacking me. Oh boy. Friends, Romans, countrymen, this is not good. So, the auto resolve has me valiant, valiant, and close defeat, which means I'll probably win if I fight it manually, but just barely. So, we have Legio 2, led by Marcus Attilius Regulus, commanding 4,191 valiant Romans versus the Carthaginians. Right, led by Namastate. They have 4,990 men. It is Melkart's Justice. Just so looking at their army, they have a couple Sacred Band hoplites, some regular hoplites, some civilian hoplites. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cavalry, plus two more generals. That's nine cavalry. So we have our main force. No one's in the red, but we do have one, two, three, four, five, five units, four units in the yellow. And then our garrison army is <laughs> not good, but yeah, what choice do we have? Let's uh, get this started. Marcus Attilius Regulus of Legio II versus Namsete of Melkart's Justice. Fight it out. So we have the Battle of Syracusae, 266 BCE. Now, we were in that fortify stance, so we do have a fort that we can play around, plus towers. So even though the auto resolve has us losing, I do think we will win. Not easily, because these are some pretty good troops coming in, but I still think we're going to win. Now that I'm looking at it, a few of them are mercenary troops, and mercenary troops, while higher quality than civilian troops generally have poor morale so we're gonna hope we can break them but we'll see I feel like this is Carthage's last gasp here like it's one full army probably a third of it is mercenaries and then we only got a half army reinforcing us the bad part is once they attack this army is gonna be pretty well depleted and Legio 3 is still three turns back from returning meaning if another army does show up well, we're in trouble. So, we have our fort here, right? We have entrances on the north, the west, and the south. So we're going to go ahead and get our uh, our troops out here. All the troops that are most healthy will go out first. Got our cavalry on the side here. And, uh, yeah, I don't know where our troops are coming in from. I would assume they come in behind us, but you never know. And then we're going to go ahead and leave our most injured units in the city right now. We have our generals pretty healthy. And we're going to assume that uh, the enemy is going to engage us from the front here. So we're going to just set up our infantry right in front. With our triarii on the sides. And then our cavalry on the flanks to provide support. With our general in the middle. We also got some deployables here, it's again because we're on the defense, so we're going to go ahead and put our spike traps down like usual, have a nice row then in front, and we're going to put some caltrops on the side, this way uh, if the enemy horsemen get anything crazy going on, maybe that'll help, and then we're going to set up some barriers as well, barriers aren't huge, but you know, positioning my men behind them never hurt anybody, and uh, yeah, that's it. We're gonna go ahead and start the battle. We're gonna stretch our lines out. Normal. The enemy Carthaginians were directly in front of us. 
I didn't make battle groups, so we're making battle groups right now. So everyone's Enemy reinforcements in battle group. approaching. Enemy reinforcements are somewhere, and then I'm gonna bring in my allies. They came in right behind me, but oh my god, are they on the other end of the map? They are like a day's walk away from my military camp, so we're just gonna have them sprint to the camp and exhaust themselves sprinting because why not? There's actually a good amount of them coming in. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units coming in, but only half of them are at 200 health. The rest of them are. Well, they're not. Oh my god, they charged me. The Roman, or the Carthaginian cavalry is right up here in my face already. So we're gonna counterattack here. My Pila just went off. I'm gonna just let them smash into my, my lines here. If that's what they wanna do, then I'll oblige them. So my left two Triarii on the left flank have engaged the enemy cavalry, as well as two units of Equites. And uh, my Principe line in the front is holding pretty well. Remember, I put those barricades up, so you know they had barricades to get through. And I'm gonna have my Equites hunt down these uh, fleeing horsemen. Get my Triarii back in line here. I'm actually gonna get my general in front see if he wants to hunt some people down. So that one cavalry unit actually went to my west gate, which is being defended by the heavily injured. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Heavily injured units. So they're actually charging them. So that's a nice little distraction as well. We're gonna go ahead and actually order our men to counterattack here. I think it's okay. We got enough uh, enough units here. Triaria units taking a beating. We're getting our men involved now. Our general is under attack. Our general is under attack. He's gonna send out this fire in the rally. We're gonna get the rest of our units involved here. Alright, our units are involved. We're doing doing good. Everyone's engaged the enemy. We're holding the line of battle. Brave Romans to a man. Carthaginian elite isn't just involved yet, but they're getting there. Uh, those enemies have routed, so we're going to take that backup force we had on the west gate and get them involved. Oh, oh, that's the enemy general unit. We do not want to send our cavalry into the enemy general unit. That would be harmful to our health. Lots of good stuff happening here, though. The enemy cavalry, I think about half of them are defeated so far. So if we can defeat more of them, that'll be good. Not a whole lot of places to use my cavalry, though. The enemy's being pretty pretty defensive. There is a force of Parasim Kenyon here. So we're actually going to get them involved. We're just chasing the one enemy at Equite unit. Alright, my citizens are up here now. So are my archers. We're gonna try to get them up there moving. Yeah, by the time these reinforcements get there, the battle's gonna be over. Uh, we got some more enemy units rallying here. Alright, that's good. Let's get them moving up. I'm holding, but... There's just so many micro-battles taking place again. So, the enemy cavalry that attacked in my left flank, they are now completely routed. So I'm actually going to recall my cavalry. I would like to chase for kills, but it's just not worth it, chasing for kills. Not when I can use them to hammer the enemy. Here. A couple more units routed. Things are looking good. None of my units are in the red just yet. You never know. More enemy spearmen just came in. There's a lot of hoplite, like hop, uh, hoplite, like spearmen that are currently. I don't want to say aggravating me, but 
and there's uh, just a lot of hoplite like spearmen that are just hanging out. And we're going to be providing pretty, pretty decent reinforcements for the enemy. So we're going to get our equites out of there and hope that they're doing well. A couple of our Equite units are pretty wounded, but that's okay. We're gonna get them to re-rally up, and then re-engage our lines of battle here. Everything's looking good. We reinforced a couple areas in the center, and then we surrounded an enemy on the left. We go ahead and get our general. He's gonna actually execute a cavalry charge in there. There's a one unit of swordsmen on the left that's taking up three of my units, and I want them to break. If they can break. That'll free up three more units that can uh, help out. I'll hit them with the. Uh, the enemy general is. That's dead. lucky. The enemy general said, "I forgot that our general isn't Lucius Julius Libo, so he doesn't have all the bonuses. It's Marcus Atilius Regulus. So because of that, he doesn't have Dread Commander. Right? He's missing a lot of stuff that helps out." I wonder if this is a little bit harder. Oh, they're wavering, just break already. That one unit is broken, good. So we had another unit of sturdy Libyan come in, right? That's the Libyan swordsman. And then one of my Triarii actually just fled. But like I said, that's to be expected. We're kind of we're hammering our left flank. We're pushing in right, but they're pushing in my right flank, and that's just I'm overloaded on the left side right now. Oh, my reinforcements got here too. I wasn't using them. I'm just gonna send them right in the middle. Now we're gonna have these archers just try to pick off some units in the middle. Alright, right, our cavalry's in melee combat, which we don't like. Oh, glory. God, this one unit of Carthaginian. There's two units of Carthaginian horsemen on the field still, and they just will not break. Not for the life of me, and I don't know why. Okay, they're wavering on the right. I've had two Equite units and two local citizens surrounding them. And they just have not broken yet. And then I sent two Equites and my general in to attack the enemy general. I don't know if this one's the one that's alive or dead, but he's now wavering. So if we can take that Carthaginian general horseman unit off the board, that will... Our men flee the field of battle! Our middle is this breaking. Is right. We just need to get reinforcements into our middle. There's just too many in the middle. They have like five or six units in the middle. And the good news is, like I said, we're, we're taking over the left here, but if our middle caves... The enemy general is dead. So the enemy general is actually dead, right? The real general unit. So that's the morale hit that we need. That should help. Although, like I said, the Carthaginians have broken through here in the middle. They're causing a mess. We're going to redeploy all of our reinforcements that came to the city. And we're going to try some repeated cavalry charges here. Like I said, we're, we're cleaning up shop on the left pretty nice. And there's one cavalry charge. We'll take two more. Let's try to break that one unit. Plenty of reinforcements into the middle line. Alright, so that unit routed. Very good. Let's get our equites and our general back out. We have one equite chase. We also have archers that are still raining down on the enemy, so they're not gonna do a ton of damage, but some damage is better than none. Right, there's a routing sturdy Libyan, so cavalry charge there. We don't want to charge them though. 
Alright, three Equite units and the General going in on one unit. That's how much I want it to work. And we're going to redeploy these, uh, these Triaria over here. And then come in behind the enemy. Alright, that unit is successfully shattered. Turns out mass cavalry charges are your friend. We already knew that. Though. And then those units that routed, we had two units to route. Three units route, and they've actually reformed. We're gonna get them back in the battle. I'm gonna reline up my cavalry force here. I think right now it's just gonna boil down to just this grinding attrition that we're so used to. I'm gonna look for some weaknesses here. But there's a good weakness to exploit. No weakness to exploit. So whenever you see a wavering flag here, right, like there's two in the middle, if you can execute a cavalry charge, they're almost guaranteed to break. So they just both of them just break. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. Still got a couple units fleeing, but that's okay. That we're just looking for any flags that waver. There's starting to be more and more of them. We're getting there. Enemy has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units left on the board. Here's me ordering cavalry in, uh, charging the enemy, and then charging or retreating back out. Shot cavalry incoming. Like I said, we're going to sustain some casualties with these repeated charges, but it's going to be the best way to slowly grind down his enemies and probably save a good amount. Like right here, right, there was two Carthaginian units I had surrounded, three cavalry charges, and they just completely folded. So that's just two more units gone off the board. No, but they also had pretty low morale at the beginning. There's a lot of these units left. They're the Hanatim Kanatim. And if you remember the Hanatim Kanatim and Hanatim Kanim, those are the sacred band hoplites, right? Those are your, your hoplites that don't fold very easily. Or the ones that kind of fight to the death. We don't like units that fight to the death. They, uh, they cause us too many casualties. So we're we'll just going to make sure we got enough units in here surrounding them. We'll try to rain death down here. Let's do that. There's a couple units that are fleeing. So we're just going to have our cavalry chase them down while we have the time. Like I said, we do have to be careful here because there are mostly spearmen units left. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sacred band left. Sacred band of lights. All we're going to do is surround them and uh, attempt to get them to flee. But it's going to take quite a bit. I think they're just. They're not breaking. And a lot of my men are starting to flee because of it. And I'm looking for openings here, but the morale on all these units is high. Since in a rallying cry because. Not because I want to rally. I'm gonna start doing some silly things and doing cavalry charges from the rear. One of our units has used all its ammunition. I'm hoping that we can cause units to not route but suffer some damage. But we're gonna lose potentially a lot of cavalry in the process, which I really can't afford to lose. But right now we're just kinda of getting our getting our Roman Legion. Just 
just need to do damage. I'm gonna triple charge this one. Connaughton, Connaughton. One of our units has used all its okay, so I sent the general in for one, and he broke that one. Just barely. Equites didn't work. Get out of there, boys. Ready to ride. Oh, man. Okay, so these Carthaginian Sacred Band hoplites are just tough. Ready and waiting. I'm not sure what to do. I'm just gonna do what we normally do. Repeated cavalry charges. Our cavalry is going to take a beating, but that is what it is. One of my other favorite sayings. So we got another Honiton Honiton here on the side that's wavering heavily. The and they're routed now. Favor. All right, so we got two more wavering Honiton Honiton. Oh, that one routed. I didn't even notice. That's good. Okay, so I'm feeling a lot better right now. Like, a lot better. I could still be feeling better, but for now, I think this is good. So right now, we've gone into, instead of panic mode, we're going into try not to lose too many troops mode because we can't reinforce and uh, help is still a year away. Literally a year away. Three turns until I can get help to this side. Uh, this island. You have all this, sir. Our charge! <sighs> That's me being sad. Pull back! Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. Cavalry is taking a beating. Though. That's the biggest thing. I said my cavalry is. I mean, like, everyone is. Everyone's pretty much in the yellow or in the red right now. But I don't got much of a choice at the moment. I'm redeploy some cavalry again here. There's not a ton left, but there's enough that hopefully I can make a couple cavalry charges here. And get a couple big morale penalties. Charge one unit and they shattered. I'm charging the second unit now and they're wavering. I'm charging the third unit and that should be the battle. Yep, there it is. As always, let's uh, continue the battle and hunt these Carthaginians down. The sacred band that gave me so very much trouble. Because sacred band ca uh, sacred band cavalry is terrible. Sacred band hoplites. Uh, these uh. Conatum, Conatum, and Doricum, Cadosum. Just a pain. But yeah, uh, in general, I mean, it went about as expected. I guess I'm gonna probably lose at least a third, maybe half my men, because these were two pretty good armies that came in. I can't see myself losing more than half, but given the casualties I incurred, it's a distinct possibility, actually, that I lost half of them. Definitely a third. Possibly half. So, we did a pretty good mop-up operation. Let's go ahead and end this battle. Quick battle. Close victory. So this was battle number 12. We fought Carthage. We were outside of Sierra. S-Y-R-A. Zeracus. Um, it was 266. BCE, and it was a defensive battle. Oh, we don't have enough room. Uh, what can I do to make this a little shorter? Mm, not much I can take out, so we're just gonna kind of keep it as this. It's gonna be a little lopsided, but you know what? That's okay. And end the battle. 
So close victory will look likely be the uh, Pyrrhic victory. So yeah, we lost 2,018 men. So about half, right? We deployed 4,191. We lost 2,018. So I guess a little less than half. I did say I didn't think it would be more, but we got some big casualties here, right? Uh, for the enemy, 458 for one Equita unit, 315 for another, 392, 310. General doing 291. And uh, then, you know, some of my forces, my uh, Princa Pace, 299, 255, 248, like lots of big kills there. But then I got some units, 30, 49, 91 kills, right? Like it depended who I went up against. Those Carthaginian spearmen just didn't work, though. Oh, nice. I fully destroyed both armies, too. So that's huge. That is huge. Okay, so here we go. Our after actions report. It wasn't a Pyrrhic victory, it stayed a close victory. So since Carthage attacked us, Carthage deployed 4,990 men. They lost 4,765. They only had 225 remaining, and they killed 1,964 of my men, with zero enemy captured. Rome deployed 4,191 men, so about 800 less. We only lost 2,018, so a little bit less than half. We have 2,173 uh, remaining, so a little bit more than half, and we killed 3,504 with 1,014 enemy captured. Now, we do have slave issues in some of our territories, but I really don't want to ransom these captives back so they can use it against me. So we're going to go ahead and enslave the population. It's going to be 1,937. Well, before I do so, I just want to let you guys know that no one from Legio 2 disbanded. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units in the red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units in the yellow, and only one unit left in the green. But everyone from Malkart's Justice, and everyone from Dito's Faithful, the uh, backup army has successfully been. Killed. So that's two more Carthaginian armies that are now off the board that have to be re-raised. So we're going to enslave them, like I said. We're going to gain 1,014 slaves and 1,937 wealth. So good job, Marcus and Tullius Regulus. Remember, we did not have our main commander. Lucius Julius Libo was injured by Abibal. So that was a big, big win. Now, I am a little scared here because I saw unit sail into the port at Carolus, and I saw a unit sail into the port at Akragos. I'm not sure if these are fleets or if they are armies. The army at Carolus doesn't bother me too much. The army at Akragos would be devastating because I do not have a way to repel it. Simply simply put, Legio 2 is too beat up. Uh, the Edetani fleet also sailed south, and an Apyro fleet is sailing south. Interesting. I wonder where Apyros is going. I figured they'd be focusing on Pella and the Antigonids, but they're sending a full stack army on the ocean. It's actually south of Magna Gratia right now. So that's interesting. I know they're at war with Carthage, but I didn't think they'd be sending a navy that far away to maybe help me? I don't know. Or maybe they're going to try to land on Syracuse and take some cities because they're not very well defended. Remember, both Agragas and Panormos were pretty, pretty well open. So yeah, we'll see what happened in Agragas. That's going to be our, our hinge point right now. Is that an army, or is that a navy? Uh-oh, the Lugos took Segestica. So... Venetians still have a kink, but they lost Sega Interesting. Okay, let's go over our event messages. So I didn't do this last turn. Apologies, but welcome to turn 51. We are in a beautiful summer of 266 BCE. So what are we going to do here? Well, the first thing is ready to command. Lucius Julius Libo, our primus inter pares, is no longer wounded. Uh, Marcus Attilius Regulus, the general, has gained one level. So, good for him. Ionia Calva and Aria Calvina have returned to missions, and we have completed boiling oil. Not even the bravest can master their horror when being scalded to death. And we 
achieved uh, Siege 1. And then Abibal, target Marcus Claudius Marcellus. Action, misdirection. Your agent has been hindered by an enemy spy and as a result has been slowed down. That's fine. Hinder him all he wants. He's already in Sicily. And then military traditions. Legio 2 is now rank 4. The brave men of this army have known many victories. Only their courage facing the enemy exceeds their skill at arms. And then pirates spotted in Ascalum. So, that is a lot to unpack. Before we unpack, I would just like to let you know that Agrigas and uh, Careless both had navies sail into their ports. So, thankfully, they didn't land another army. It is just a navy in Agrigas. Now, before we continue further, I will let you know this will probably be it. I'll finish this turn, do my uh, spotlight on Alalia, and then call it a day. So, without further ado, let's get into turn 51. We have unseasonal conditions, a scorching hot summer in Corsica at Sardinia. That's negative. We have a warm summer in Latium. That's positive. And a scorching hot summer in Sicilia. That is negative. If you recall, Lucius Julius Libo is back, and Marcus Atilius Regulus gained a level. He went to rank 2, so we're going to go ahead and do our promotion. So, his first natural talent is Concordia. Unity among the Romans pleases the gods. Minus 20% public order penalties due to local presence of foreign cultures in the local province, and plus 2 cultural conversion. That will be huge for when he finally gets his own command. Then we're going to go into military logistician. Every battle can be won before it is even fought. Plus one cunning and minus 5% upkeep for all land units and all ships. And then we're going to go into Commander of Men. I have seen countless enemies as well as comrades fall before me. Plus one authority and plus 2% morale for all troops. And then we are going to replace him with Lucius Julius Libo, our primus inter pares. We're going to go ahead and hire him back and send Marcus Atlas Regulus back to Rome and thank him for his duty. Uh, construction report, we have completed an aqueduct in Sadarcusae, a consecrated ground in Sadarcusae, a consecrated ground in Ariminum, and a villa in Genoa. Uh, we also have a couple character trait reports here. So Lucius Julius Libo has become philosophic mature. So I'm just looking at him right now. Philosophic mature, that is plus 20% research rate unlocks the ability to reach the higher tier intellectual trait renowned philosopher minus 10 percent chance of successfully launching an ambush army only so he doesn't do that minus six percent morale for all units during offensive battles that definitely does hurt and plus 30 percent wealth from culture in the local province good but because he's more of a military man overall negative right because there's nothing that really helps the military the plus 20 percent research rate is nice but eh. And then Lucius Cornelius Scipio has become obsessive, and it is aged. So looking at Lucius Cornelius Scipio, obsessive aged. Plus 15% public order penalties due to local presence of foreign cultures, local province. So that's bad because he's going to be contributing to issues on Alalia. Minus 6 to chance of having kids, so I guess he'll never have children. Plus 9% morale for all units during battles in own or allied territory, army only. So that's good if he's more of a defensive commander. Minus 12% construction costs in the local province, and plus 12% wealth from industry in the local province. The wealth is kind of lackluster, but the construction costs, wow. Being in Alalia, where I'm going to construct four buildings this turn, that's a big deal. That is a very big deal. Uh, troops recruited, right? Legio 3 recruited that unit of horsemen. We got a research done, and uh, we got a bunch of household expands here. Whew. So Marcus Attilius Regulus got a heroic savior. A good man remembers his real friends. Plus 8% chance of wounding enemy agents in self-defense. Plus 4% morale for the commander's unit. So that's probably because he was in the thick of it. Marcus Attilius Regulus also got an inspiring signifier. Rally to the standard. Plus 3% charge bonus for all units. Plus 4% morale for all units. And plus 1 authority. Marcus Attilius Regulus also got a diligent Centurion. Oh, and uh, throw him to the floor, sir. Plus two public order per turn in a local province. Uh, Lucius Julius Libo got an orator. Some can make even a shopping list sound momentous and interesting. Plus two public order from characters in the local province. And then Quintus Trebilius Strabo, the admiral, got a publishing. How about you pay those taxes and I'll see what can be done about getting this temple rebuilt. Minus 8% building construction costs in the local province. 
minus 15% wealth from mines in the local province, and minus 15% temple construction costs in the local province. We also built two more assault by reams, and uh, yeah, spotted pirates off the coast, so we'll have to handle that. And the military traditions, Legio 4 leveled up. So let's look at what they leveled up to. So, we have one more skill slot left that we can go into. So we have the engines of war, which we talked about, we don't use. The accomplished skirmishers, we also don't use. And the dread ambushers, we don't use. Now we do have indomitable legionaries. Men grow strong through rigorous training and the blood of their enemies. Plus 3% melee attack skill for all very heavy infantry units, and plus 3% melee defense skill for all very heavy, heavy infantry units. So we're going to go ahead with Indomitable Legionaries, because all we use is heavy infantry, right? That's our main go-to. Now we did have a couple new ones show up here, so I'm going to go over them real quick. Defenders of Roma. Few can stand strong in the face of impossible odds. Plus 3% shots per minute for auxiliary and area of recruitment units, plus 3% morale for auxiliary and area of recruitment units. Now, Defenders of Roma sounds cool, but none of those bonuses will help us at all. Provincial Guard. Those who defend their homes are eager to fight. Plus 3% attack for levy units, plus 3% increased defense for levy units. Once again, Provincial Guard. Sounds cool, but we don't use levy units, so useless. Now, Legio Roma Invicta, or as the Romans would say, Invicta because the V's are W's. Rome is mother to all, and she must be protected. I can't say it better. Rome is mother to us all. Plus 3% replenishment rate for all units, and minus 3% upkeep for all land units. I'm definitely going to go on that. Uh, the replenishment helps, but the minus 3% upkeep? Sublime. That was 300 denarii right there with that. And uh, yeah, that's it. We don't really have anything else. We're going to go for new skill slots. We have one skill slot left that we can currently use, right? Because we get three per. We're gonna go upgrade something we already have. And I'm thinking that's gonna be probably, yeah, we're gonna go with inexorable conquerors. When men have no care for the conquered, no one is safe. We're gonna go from plus 3% to plus 6% morale for all units during battles in foreign territory and plus 10% to plus 20% number of battle captives. And we're basically just going to do that for the battle captives that we can then, uh, you know, enslave. I wouldn't say it's right necessarily, but yeah, it's, it's something. Uh, we also had our veterans level up. It didn't show here. I would have thought it would have said it on the side, but it didn't. So, yeah, that handles our event messages. They are all complete. So we're going to go ahead and Go down the list like usual. Uh, Ulpia Severa is going to stay deployed on Sicily. And uh, Memia Hanobarba is going to stay deployed right outside of Careless. And they're just going to keep gathering vision, doing what they do. Uh, Marcus Caecilius Scorus will stay deployed just south of Rome. And Decimus Claudius Nepos will stay deployed west of Terrace. Now we will move Marcus Claudius Marcellus. He won't be deployed anymore, but we are going to move him. Mm, yeah, we're going to move him a little bit closer to Syracuse, and then we're actually going to move Legio 2. Uh, actually, Legio 2 for some reason can't move. I'm not sure why. Oh, it's because I had a commander join this turn, right? So he can't move. So we're going to just put him back in that fortified stance. And we'll have Marcus Claudius uh, Marcellus just move. We'll have him move right here for now. Just getting him closer to Syracuse, see if he can't get us some vision. Which he cannot, he might not be deployed anymore, but he's still giving a lot of his bonuses to, right, the city of Syracuse, so I'm okay with it. And then I guess we'll handle our two veterans, like I said, they leveled up, they didn't say that they did, but we'll go to Sextus Antonius Dento first. And I think what I'm going to do is give him new, new stuff here, so it's been a while. What do I upgrade him with, huh? That's the, that's the uh, real question here. So it looks like, hmm, it looks like we need, we have three slots left that we can pick. So we have to decide, I think we're going to go into Guardian here. 
Guardian looks pretty good. So what does Guardian do? It's plus one authority, minus two percent chance of success of enemy agent actions in the local province or parent army, minus two, or plus two security for local province while deployed. That one won't matter because he's not deployed. And minus 10% chance of success of enemy agent actions against a parent army or general authority base. So basically what Guardian will do is make it harder for an enemy to affect this army. So first we're going to go into uh, Unity because we don't have that. So Unity, a true champion can unite mortal enemies under one banner. Minus 5% public order penalties due to the presence of foreign cultures and local province while deployed. Authority based. Doesn't matter because he never deploys. Minus 5% chance of success of enemy agents against parent, army, or general authority base. So that helps. That'll make it harder for Abibal to hurt me. Then unlocks the action Rally Slaves. Cause minus 5 public order in the target settlement. And has a chance to cause an instant rebellion authority base. We don't use that. So we basically went into authority for the minus percent chance of happening and then guardian i swear by the gods to protect you with my life and we already read guardian but i guess we'll do it again plus one authority minus two percent chance of success of enemy agent actions in the local province or parent army authority based minus or plus two security for local province while deployed doesn't matter he doesn't deploy and minus ten percent chance of success of enemy agent actions against the parent army or general authority based so that was huge like between guardian and unity that's a lot of get out of here and don't hurt my dad, right? Stay away from my dad! And then I think we're actually going to upgrade uh, Unity to level 2 here. So what's going to happen is it'll take that uh, minus 5% minus chance to minus 10% chance of success of enemy agent actions. That's a big one there. And that's why we did that. So this way, you know, like I said, Abby Ball can't hurt us. And we'll go to our second, right, Marcus Coolius Mergus, and he's just going to follow the same path. He's going to go into Unity, and then Guardian, and then he's going to upgrade Unity again. And, uh, yeah, that'll handle our veterans. So it's nice that they leveled up. Now, with our veterans out of the way, we can check our faction tab and maybe gain some support here. So we're going to go ahead, click on Lucius Julius Libo, and click Gather Support. And uh, that has returned us to balanced influence in the Senate. And we are still a 0% chance of civil war. So let's check our uh, breakdown here. Against Cornelia is 19%. Same with against Junia. So we're going to see if we can't send them out on missions again. If there's anything that needs to be done. If something doesn't have to be done, we won't do it. But as it stands, yes, we're going to have to do that. So we're going to go send... Uh, Iunia Calva to organize games in Cisalpina. And then we'll send uh, Arena Calvina as an emissary to Latium to get us for food. And yeah, that handles our faction politics for now. Risk of civil war is 0%, and we are balanced influence rate in the Senate. Couldn't ask for much better. Now, before we get too far into other campaign map stuff, I do want to do my technology. If you recall, the management tree is done, the tactics tree I'm going to leave alone because it costs money, and the siege tree is done. We actually completed that. So siege 1 gave us minus 2 enemy siege holdout time, double for city ports, and minus 3% siege unit costs in all province. Once again, not helpful, but hey, at least we can say tier 1's done and we can move on to tier 2 whenever we want. Now, we do have 17,122 denarii in the treasury, which is huge. And we have 7,553 we're going to make next turn, which is also huge. But, with that Editani fleet coming for us, we are going to have to raise a fourth army, which will drop our income down a ton. So I'm going to go into economy, and we're actually going to go into something kind of crazy here. Actually, we're not going to go into economy. I lied to you. We're going to go into construction. We're going to go into advanced construction techniques because this allows us to upgrade all of our, basically, towns and cities. So we can upgrade our towns from level 2 to level 3 and our cities from level 2 to level 3, which means big money. Now, they're going to eat up a lot of food. Remember I said we're going to eat a lot of food, but big money. And it's going to be six turns to research this, so hopefully in six turns... We'll have Sicily and Corsica at Sardinia under our control. And as we get using up food, we'll be developing more food. So it'll balance it out. But 
it'll give us a huge income bump. So that's kind of where I'm getting at. So what's advanced construction techniques? Well, when the limits of brick, stone, and wood are known, the builder's ambition can soar. And like I said, any city or town center can be upgraded from level 2 to level 3 here. And plus the trench mine, but that's kind of an afterthought. So, a little bit more about advanced construction techniques, which will take six turns to complete. As building materials become more understood and skills developed amongst architects and builders, new construction techniques became possible. Domes, arches, and vaults became regular features in Roman architecture, but a true dome was perhaps the pinnacle achievement of architects and builders of the time. They posed complex puzzles when it came to supporting the weight of the structure as it was being built, and it took time and a certain amount of trial and error for architects to perfect the system. The Pantheon in Rome is one of the best examples of a true dome and suggests that by 128 CE, architects had mastered the form. So there you go. A little bit about construction techniques. Well, advanced construction techniques. After we're done with that, we're probably going to circle back to that economy tab, like I said, and go with improved irrigation, right? That'll take us another six turns, but that'll give us access to more food buildings, and it'll help bump up our food a little bit as we cut into it by upgrading all of these buildings. Now, I was hoping to be a little greedy and hold on to this per turn income so we can build a lot of cities, right, when the time came, but... I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to have to spend this sooner rather than later. So, such is life. Not much can be done about it. As I say that, it's time to look at our buildings. So, looking at Genoa, we're going to take this villa, and we're going to build a farm. We need food, right? I told you we're going to need food, so why not? Uh, Alalia, right? We have three, or we have four total slots with two that are open. We're going to build the iron mine in one. So what's the iron mine? Bronze. Pah! Bronze is for children. We're going to gain 10 iron, 150 wealth from mining, that's industry, and plus 0.1% second class citizens. Eventually we're going to turn that into a shield maker, so that'll be helpful, but for now it's just the iron mine. A little bit about that. According to early documentation, it was the Hittites who first used iron to forge weapons whilst fighting the Egyptians. Despite being more brittle and variable in quality than bronze, iron was cheaper and more abundant, so rulers could arm large armies of peasants more economically. It was used to make spears and arrowheads, swords and armor. Its versatility and availability made it very popular throughout the ancient world. Molds were rarely used in the ancient world to create the weapons. Instead, they employed a laborious method of smelting ore at temperatures higher than those needed for copper. The iron was then broken free from the waste slag and shaped during a lengthy process of firing and pounding tough work right to be a blacksmith so for 2309 denarii we will build an iron mine that will be done in four turns and then as always the last slot is going to be a consecrated ground because well because alalia really needs it now i am going to keep lemma mia and Barba next to careless but there is the northern part of uh Sardinia that I can't see. So I am going to move Legio 6, led by uh, Lucius Cornelius Scipio, up here to kind of the north end of Alalia, like the very north end. He should be able to reinforce still, but the idea is I'm going to have him patrol up here. Right, That patrol will uh, help me get plus 4 public order, because Alalia was at minus 18. It's now at minus 14 now. But... Uh, this province actually could rebel, right? Like Alalia, even with taxes exempt, minus 14 is a lot. I don't know if I can come out of it. Maybe I can. I know there's bad weather there. I know that there's some other modifiers there, but minus 14 per turn is pretty steep. Like, really steep. But it is what it is. I did want to get Lucius Cornelius Scipio on Sardinia, raiding sooner rather than later. But for now, we're going to just have him patrol. You know, and, you know, we need units. It's not like we're getting people quick, though. Even looking at the manpower here in Alalia, we're only at 60 patricians and 100 plebs. So it's going to be probably a year or two before Legio 6 fully replenishes. Uh, like I said, we can just march right into Carolus, but we're going to probably wait for the, uh, the, uh, what is it? Not the, the public order. Well, we're going to wait for public order, but we're going to wait for the culture to flip in our favor, too. Looking down here at 
Legio 2, right? Lucius Julius Libo is back. I'm going to keep him in a fortified stance right outside the city. Uh, then we got Legio 3. Uh, Naeus Cornelius Scipio Asina. He is ready to roll. So he's going to be rolling. He's going to roll pretty far. He's going to get all the way from Asculum, past Beneventum, and just north of Cosentia. So remember, this is summer. In fall, he'll have a good amount of movement too. So maybe by spring of next year, winter if I'm lucky, I can be in reinforcement range. So maybe not next turn, but the turn after, he'll be able to reinforce there. And then maybe he goes on the offensive. I don't know. We'll see. It, it depends what this pyro fleet is doing here. I say fleet, but it's an army. It's the Titanes is on the ocean again in the 20 stack. If they get too close to Carthage's you know, cities, and Carthage doesn't take them out, I might just have to take the city before they do, and just another way to describe it. It's my city, not yours. Now, the Blazing Fury of Neto did sail around. It's just south of Carolus. We'll have to keep an eye on them next turn, but if they loop around, and they loop up towards Rome, then I'll know for sure that they're going towards Rome, and I'll have to start recruiting, like actually recruiting an army to defend Rome. For now, though, we're going to keep Legio 1, led by Decimus Junius Brutus, halfway between Aretium and Rome. We'll keep Marcus Junius Brutus up north by Ariminum, and we'll keep Lucius Papyrus Cursor right next to Rome. And that handles our armies. Now, our navy is just hanging out here, but uh, it's going to have to go on the offensive, I think. We have the Terrors of the Sea here. It's actually a 19 stack, which is actually not good. A 19 stack can hurt me, and they can hurt me bad. I do not, I do not know what I want to do with a 19 stack. <sighs> Just looking at the ships, they're not of high quality ships, but the fact that they outnumber us pretty well means. There's not a whole lot I can do about it. Like, most of their ships only have 500 health. There's only a handful with maybe five or 600. And then I think there's only two with 800. But I just don't have enough ships. Like, right now I have 14 ships in my main fleet. And then 15 and 16, including the other two. That's just not enough. So looking at Ascalon... I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take classes as 2 and 3, and we're just going to have to take them out of patrol stance and sail them close to Terrace and hope. Now, this is going to cause a bunch of money problems, because it is. We're also going to take classes as 1 out of the port. Maybe we can put them back in a patrol stance here. I have them lined up right outside the port. Does a patrol stance do anything? It gives me melee defense skill, so I guess that's something. So we'll just put them all back in a patrol stance right outside of a... Right outside of Terra. So, not the worst. I mean, I don't have anyone patrolling the Mare Adriticum now, so I have that minus 28% wealth from piracy. But the Mare Ionium is only a minus 0% wealth now because I have three patrolling ships. Maybe maybe a Pyros will be nice and uh, sail out and try to attack that, that thing. I don't know. Actually... Passes as one can't patrol because they have to recruit. We're going to add, gonna add two more assault by reams. One, two. There we go. God, it's getting expensive. We're already down to nine thousand nine hundred forty-eight denarii. So Genoa was good. Like I said, nothing to build there. Alalia is good. I could upgrade, like I said, the port in the town, but I'm not going to because they're very expensive and I want to have a good amount of money stored up here. Ariminum, I could upgrade this consecrated ground, but like I said, I am currently saving money just in case that fleet turns towards me. Not to mention, I do have an issue up here. The Lugos took Segestica, and the Venetians are pretty beat up, and I don't have an army to defend the honor. So maybe, maybe I have to already start recruiting an army. Down to 5,754 denarii when I took him out of that stance. 
rough. Okay, so I almost got a patrol because I just... Ugh. Things were going well. Having Yotter being threatened right now. It's not that it's income. Yotter's income is inconsequential at 377. It's I put a lot of money into this place for it to fall. So we are going to start recruiting an army here. We're going to take Legio 1 out of that uh, patrol stance. Move it as close to our Riminum as possible. And uh, we're gonna recruit our cheapest unit here, which is going to be the Principe. So we already have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And that has brought us down to 3,693 denarii. Ouch. Uh, we did complete the aqueduct and the consecrated ground in Sarakusai, which is good. We still are having some issues, though. Just looking at it here, Yadar is having some issues, too. We'll cover Yadar later, but as for Sarakus, we are minus 72 with minus 3 next turn. Minus 7 from provincial instability. Minus 6 from slaves, minus 7 from taxes, and minus 16 from cultural differences. So we need to become Roman faster. The quickest way to do that is to either upgrade our latrines or our shrine. The latrines are a lot more expensive, but and I do want that growth. So we're going to go with the latrines again. You know, it's, it's not good either way. I guess the shrine of Jupiter would make me Latinize faster, but... We're going to go with the latrines. So for 2,933 denarii in six turns, we're starting some latrines in Satyrkus, and we are down to 760 denarii. So just like that, right? I told you. Just like that, we are out of money, and we're recruiting a fourth army, and we have a potential fleet, the Editani, coming towards Rome. Now, I'm not going to pull the rip for just yet. I might sue for peace, but like I said, the Lugo is taking... Sagastika has me worried. Now, if the Venetians can take Sagastika back, we'll be in good shape. But if they don't, I'll be on my own. So, yeah. Uh, Massalian Theater looks good. There's a 20 stack, the Servants of Charo, sitting in Narbo. Like I said, in the Venetian Theater, not as good. Sagastika was taken by the Lugos, and there's a beat up Venetian army here. So, I'm not sure what's happening there. The Antigonids are still holding on to Pella, and Larissa maintains its Apiro control. Besides that, nothing else. So that's it. I'm not going to go into the Diplomacy tab either, because not much happened, but depending on what happens, I might sue for peace with the Editani. Just because, let me check out the Diplomacy tab now. The Editani aren't at war with anyone but me. Welcome. Speak. Come on, do not waste time, better spend it hunting. Well, the chance of peace is low, so I guess that's not even an option right now. We'll have to think about it later, but... Yeah, that's, uh, that's it for this turn. I'm not going to do much else. I do want to get into the spotlight, because, well, it's a cool one. The city of Alalia slash Corsica, the island, right? I got it right, because I drilled it in my head that Corsica is the northern island and Sardinia is the southern island. So we'll go ahead and focus here on Alalia because that's what I'm talking about and get right into it. And after I finish the spotlight, we will be done. So, where is my piece of papers? There we go. Alalia. So, Sorry, you probably hear my papers. I apologize. Alalia, present-day Illyria, is a city located on Corsica and is part of modern-day France. Corsica had an indigenous population that dated back to the Neolithic and Bronze Age. The eastern coast was colonized by local Mediterranean powers such as the Greeks, Etruscans, Romans, and Carthaginians, but the interior and the western part of the island was left largely uninhabited by those Mediterranean powers. Remember the local indigenous people? They still inhabited it. Now the eastern side of this island was more favorable because it favored the Italian peninsula. In 566 BCE, 
The Phocians founded the city of Alale on Cyrenus. That's what we call Corsica. Other sources indicate the name of the city was Calaris, but there is no doubt that both Calaris and Alale were in fact the same city. With the Greek city of Alale established, the Etruscans founded the city of Nicaea to the north. The Greeks and the Etruscans were trade rivals. Now, the Phocians were Greeks in this case. I do go back and forth with that, so kind of use that interchangeably. The Greeks subjugated the native barbarians, of which there were no more than 30,000 according to them, and exploited the island for its rich natural resources. Later on, there was turbulence in Phoenicia, and many of the Phoenicians moved to Alalia. So remember, I do that as well. Phocians, Phoenicians, I'm terrible at getting that name right, but basically, the Phocians were the people out there, kind of in the Middle East on the coast. There was some, you know, cities being conquered back and forth, so a good portion of their population moved to Alalia, their main and only colony. With the increasing population, the Phocians were causing increasing trouble to the nearby Etruscans and the Carthaginians of Sardinia. Thus, the Battle of Alalia, a naval battle which took place between 540 and 535 BC, occurred off the coast of Corsica and Sardinia. A Greek force of about 60 uh, ships destroyed a combined Carthaginian Etruscan fleet of about 120 ships. The Phoenician ships were Pentaconantes, Pentac Pentaconters, or ships with 48 oars and two rudders for steering. The Greeks lost about 40 of those ships, and the other 20 were severely damaged and almost unusable. Even though they won the battle, the loss was, you know, irreplaceable and amounted to what would later be known as a Pyrrhic victory. They could no longer replace those ships they lost. So, realizing they could no longer defend themselves, they abandoned Corsica and set sail for Regium with their remaining fleet. The Etruscans landed their remaining fleet and disembarked the prisoners and had them stoned to death, leaving them behind where they fell. Kind of savage. Carthage, having no interest in Corsica, left it alone, and so it fell into Etruscan hands. Now, with the Etruscans occupying Alalia and Carthage and Sardinia, relative peace was restored to the region. The Etruscans kept to themselves mostly on the eastern side of the island and used the city as a trading hub. In 259 BCE, Alalia was occupied by the Romans in the First Punic War. Lucius Cornelius Scipio, same guy I sent there, destroyed the Carthaginian garrison that was present there and occupied the city. The Corsican Etruscans had been cooperating with the Carthaginians, and that made them an enemy of Rome. The remaining Etruscans integrated into Roman society just like their mainland had, and before long, all the traces of their culture were gone. Now, there was more that happened there. We're going to discuss that in the First Punic War, but that's kind of the highlight. In 80 BCE, under Sulla, the Roman Republic decided to build a major naval base on the shores of the Atang de Dayan. That's one of the rivers. Sulla also rebuilt the city and renamed it Alaria, its current name. It rose to prominence under Augustus and became the capital of Corsica. Major fleets were stationed there at the naval base. However, during the Roman Empire, the port and the city both declined, as did uh, most of the interior of Rome. There was a devastating fire in 410 CE, and the city never recovered. In 465 CE, it was thoroughly sacked by the Vandals, and after that, it became nothing but a backwater small village worth almost nothing to no one and completely forgotten about. The old city became a historical site, but was consumed by the nearby wilds, and bit by bit, it disappeared slowly under, you know, time. Marshes moved in, rivers changed, forests grew, and the city of Alalia, at least the ancient city for the most part, was buried. Now, that's a good bad thing. That's good because there are a huge number of archaeological sites on the island, and there are even more constantly being discovered because they were buried. Christianity moved in as well, but with limited contact with the mainland, there was a large pagan holdout there. Going into modern times, in the 13th century, the Genoans took interest in the island. The commune of Illyria was created in 1824, but it did not begin its true revitalization until 1945 after the Allies, primarily the Americans, had began to eradicate malaria in 1944. The Somovac, an organization created in 1957 to revive agriculture on the eastern half of the island, had great success and brought much agriculture back to Illyria. Illyria, my bad. In 1955, massive archaeological efforts were also underway to unearth ancient Illyria slash Illyria, and the area turned into a massive farming slash archaeological complex. 
To this day, stuff is constantly being discovered as fields are plowed, and, you know, like I said, basically time recovered the island, and it just buried the old city. So when you go to clear out an area, just like when Rome goes to dig a subway, well, same thing with a farm. You find ruins, so... Sad that, you know, the Roman Empire fell apart, and that much of the interior was ignored, but good for us in that we have a very nice, you know, resource. So yeah, that's the uh, the city of Alalia for our spotlight. We're going to go ahead and zoom back in on Syracuse here, and uh, it's pretty late here, and I got work tomorrow, and this has been a long episode, so I'm going to gonna call it here, and uh, I'll see you guys next time, and we'll pick up on turn 51. We'll figure out what we're going to do, but uh, as for now, I think we're going to end the turn. We're going to, you know, next time we'll see where that, you know, pirate fleet goes and see what Carthage does. So as always, uh, thanks for tuning in if you're listening now. Uh, thanks for tuning in if you're listening in the future, and uh, thanks for all your support. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. See you.